what God's done for us, the more he will do. And when we rejoice with others, because what God have done, what God has done for them, you rejoice with others, one day somebody will be rejoicing with you. Amen. It's a law. It's called, it's called sowing and reaping. And we give God praise again and again. So today we're going to go into the word of God. We're going to see what he's going to say to us. And we believe it's going to be a blessing to us. And God's going to get the glory and the praise. Can you say amen? Okay. So today I want you to turn in your Bibles to the book of Haggai. Old Testament Haggai chapter 2. Haggai chapter 2. The prophet Haggai. We're going to use this passage as a foundation for where the Spirit of God is going to take us today. And I do believe that the Word of God is going to go forth today. It's going to bring that which we need in our lives to help build us to become the people that God has called us to be. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, God. Glory to your name today, God. Haggai chapter 2. I'm going to read, I'm going to read two passages, two passages of scriptures that the Holy Spirit gave me for today. Uh, Haggai chapter 2 and Matthew chapter 7. We'll go to Matthew chapter 7 after we leave Haggai 2 and we'll look at some things there. Come on, somebody tell the Lord thank you. Hallelujah. Thank God for the praise and worship. Wasn't the praise and worship awesome today? Amen. Minstrels playing, opening up the heavens, plowing the ground for the seed. The Bible says Judah shall plow. And we know Judah is praise and the praise opens the ground up for the seed to be sown. Haggai chapter 2, and I uh, began reading with verse 6, Haggai 2, 6. He says, For thus saith the Lord of hosts, yet once it's a little while, and I will shake the heavens, the earth, the sea, and the dry land. He said, I will shake all nations, and the desire of all nations shall come. Then he says here in the latter part of verse 7, And I will fill this house with glory, saith the Lord of hosts. The silver is mine, and the gold is mine, saith the Lord of hosts. The glory of the latter house shall be greater than that of the former, saith the Lord of hosts. And in this place will I give peace, says the Lord of hosts. In this place, I will give peace, saith the Lord of hosts. Okay, now um, we're going to go to Matthew. We're going to go to Matthew chapter 7. Thank God for the Holy Spirit. Like I said, he gives us what we need. Amen. He gives us what we need for the times in which we're in. Matthew chapter 7, uh, beginning with verse number 24. Matthew 7, 24. He said, Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. Then he says, verse 26, And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them not, he shall be likened unto a foolish man, man which built his house upon the sand. The rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. Great was the fall of it. Now, between these two passages, the Holy Spirit, I've got about five messages working in me. But I want to center myself, center ourselves down to an area, to the area of building, of how to build a strong house, how to build a strong house. And I believe what the Bible talks about the house is talking about our lives. Now, I believe the Holy Spirit is taking us back to some basic things because a lot of times it's the basic things that we miss and we avoid or we stray away from that gives the enemy a right to come in. Can you say amen to that? Because a lot of times, don't think that we're so progressive that we, until we forget basic things. We must be aware of how we're building. We must be very much aware of how we're building because of what the Bible says in Haggai chapter 2. 
Now we're going somewhere with this today now. So, 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 so don't leave yet. Going back to Haggai chapter 2, he says, verse 6, For thus saith the Lord of hosts, once again it is a little while, and I will shake the heavens and the earth and the sea and the dry land. In other words, God's saying in these last days, and we're in the last days, you know that, don't you? He said, I'm going to allow some shaking to take place. He says, I'm going to allow some shaking to take place. He says, I will shake I, I will shake the heavens, I will shake the earth, the sea, and the dry land. So the shaking is for the purpose of testing our building process. Hallelujah. So the question is, how have you been building? Because when the rains come, when the wind blow, when, all, when the storm come, it'll show what kind of house you've been building. If you falter and fail, the Bible says, if you fail in the day of adversity, your, your, your strength is weak. If you fail in the day of adversity, in other words, when the day, and, and we were talking about how, how we're in a season of battle. We're in a season of warfare. We're in a season where the enemy is going to attack. But those days of adversity is when we must have or must be building a strong house. Because there's a shaking going on. Turn to your neighbor and say, there's a whole lot of shaking going on. Hallelujah. A amen. There's a lot of things being shaken. There's a lot of things being disturbed. Hallelujah. Anybody can agree with me here today. You know there's some things around you being just shaken and disturbed that you didn't order. No. God, God is allowing this for, for some reasons. Because he is testing how we've been building and when you find out that you have not been building on the right foundation that's when you must return back to the lord and find out god what have i done to cause me to crumble under the shaking hallelujah when you crumble under the shaking it tells me that there's some things in your foundation that are weak glory to god hallelujah so to build a strong house is very important. To keep your house strong is very important. You see, because you can start out strong and end up weak. You can start out strong and uh, you can start out victorious and end up failing. Because that's why consistency is so important. That, that, that we must be consistent in serving God. Hallelujah. You got to be consistent in living for God. You got to be consistent in your prayer life. Consistent in your giving. Consistency, consistency, consistency is so important because what the enemy wants to do, he wants to break that consistency. And a lot of times our consistency is broken when we become comfortable. Hallelujah. Never get comfortable living for God. You can be satisfied, but don't get comfortable. Because when you get comfortable, you're not going to do nothing. No. You, you, you're satisfied in God, but you're never at a place of rest saying, God, I've arrived, I've got it made, because with every victory, the door opens for the enemy to attack. Because a lot of times when we get a victory, we have a tendency to drop the guard. And when the enemy sees the guard is dropping, that's when he's going to try to make his entry. Because God is allowing the shaking. I said, God, we could say the devil, the devil, the devil, the devil, but God's in charge of the devil and everything else. Hallelujah. He's got him, on, God's got the devil on, on his puppet string. Amen. But he will allow the enemy to, to attack, to really to put the test, our building process. He says, I will shake the heavens. He said, I, 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 I was, uh, that says the Lord, I, I will shake the heavens, the earth, the sea, and the dry land. Verse 7, then he says, I will also shake all nations. Hallelujah. I will shake all nations, and the desire of, of, of all nations shall come. What is the desire of all nations? I'm here to tell you today that the, the desire of all nations is to serve the true and living God. In other words, those that are following Islam, those that are following Buddha, the truth of the matter is they're looking for the true God. That's the, really the desire of all nations is to find the true God and serve him. And then he says, he says I will shake all nations and uh, the desire of the nations, of all nations, shall come. In other words, God's saying, I will have people in every nation of this planet to serve me. 
other words, there will be people that will serve God in, in Southeast Asia where Muslim countries are dominating, or the Muslim religion is dominating. And, you know, there are Christians there now, but they have to be undercover because of the opposition that's there. We need to thank the Lord for the freedom we have. We got all the freedom we have to serve God, and some folks still won't serve God. And, and the one, some who want to, who serve him, they want to serve him their way. You can't have this your way. God is not running a Burger King. No, you got to do this thing the way God wants it done. Because that's the only way you can build a strong house. I said that's the only way you can build a strong house. Why? Because we're in the day of adversity. We're in the day of peril. Come on, say peril. You know what peril is? Peril is danger. And, and, and we're never, we've never been in such dangerous times. So he says here, I will shake all nations and the desire of all nations shall come. And then he says, I will, verse 7, I will fill this house with what? He said, with glory. I'm in Haggai chapter 2, verse 7. He said, I will fill this house with glory, said the Lord of hosts. So that also tells me that before the glory, there must be a shaking. Before the glory, there must be a shaking. I said, before the glory comes, there must be a shaking. So if you're experiencing much shaking right now, I declare unto you, much glory is about to show up. Much glory is about to show up. You see, because in the glory, life becomes easy. In the glory, we don't work. God works. In the glory, we don't worry. God takes care of the situation. So, but, but God's saying, I'm testing you with the shaking. I'm testing you with the shaking. So don't curse the darkness. Don't run away from the darkness. Know that that's part of your process. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then in the midst of the, of the shaking, when it gets too much, you better find help from the sanctuary. You better get where there's help from the sanctuary because God will provide help for you in the midst of your shaking. Can you say amen? I believe our daughter find help, found help this morning in the midst of her shaking. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So he says, I will fill this house with glory. Hallelujah. But you see, God, uh, God, has, to, God has to test us first. One of the purpose of the shaking is for testing. Glory to God. In other words, it, the, 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 the testing and the shaking brings out what's really in us. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Don't you know, when, when you're provoked, it really brings us what's really inside you? <laughs> hallelujah oh yes it does and sometimes what comes out don't be good <laughs> it's just like it's just like if I was to if I was to take the top off of this oil bottle stuff coming out anyway and I was to what's in here is what's going to spill out I said what's in here is what's going to spill out I said what's in here is what's going to spill out so when the enemy starts to shake your life, when he starts to shake your situation, what's in there is what's going to spill out. What's in there is what's going to waste out. So if, if the enemy's been shaking you and you're filled with the Holy Ghost, you're filled with the fire of God. When the enemy starts shaking, Holy Ghost fire is going to come out. But if when the enemy starts shaking and your life is full of flesh and carnality and worldliness, Guess what's going to come out? Flesh, carnality, and worldliness. And God, you know these words don't come out. My Lord. The devil, I rebuke you. No, 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 no. The truth of the matter is, is that the enemy has infiltrated your life with some carnality. And God says, I want you to stay filled because I'm about to shake you a little more with my spirit. I'm about to fill you with my spirit. I'm about to shake you a little more. And when I shake, when the enemy shakes you a little more, the presence of the Lord is going to spill out. The glory of the Lord is going to spill out. The Lord, I thank you in spite of what I got to deal with. I thank you anyhow, Lord. Because when you're shaking, what's in you is what's going to come out. Hallelujah. The purpose of the shaking is for testing. The purpose of the shaking is for testing. The purpose of the shaking is for testing. I said the purpose of the shaking is for testing. And God wants you to pass your tests. You see, because I come to find out that a lot of folks, and I've dealt with folks in the church, 
and pretty close we're, we're, we're approaching 25 years of ministry we got started in 1995 2020 will be 25 years and uh, we're gonna have a celebration after 25 years I think we can have a church anniversary every 25 years don't you think so we don't have them yearly like most of these folks do God said you get rid of church anniversary don't have pastor's anniversary don't nobody celebrate your birthday initially all this stuff he said get rid of all of that he said because I brought you out of the old and you're into the new all that stuff's connected to the old we're a new wineskin church here hallelujah you've come into some new wineskin movement here and this is not like the old some of you already experienced that no no God, God is getting us ready folks and the part of that process is that he is allowing shaking to take place why the shaking tests us to see if he can trust us hallelujah he's testing you to see if he can trust you and i know the cry of the righteous is how long oh lord <laughs> how long are you going to test me lord the cry of the righteous is how long god says he determines how long and when you have passed the process, when you have passed the test, when you have survived the shaking, he lets us know in verse 8, he said, the silver is mine. <laughs> Look out here now. He said, and the gold is also mine. He's testing to see who he can trust with his silver and gold. Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor and say, just pass your test. Just pass your test. All you got to do is pass your test. Just pass your test. Just pass your test. Turn around and tell somebody behind you. Just pass your test. Just pass. All you got to do is pass your test. Pass your test. You say, how do I pass my test? I'm going to give you the answer to the test even right now. When the shaking comes, don't run away from God. Run to God. When the shaking comes, don't run away from God. Run closer to God. Because what the enemy wants to do through, through, through his attack is to cause you to run away from God. And don't you know, a lot of folks do that. I, 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 I talk to people through the years. Uh, all of a sudden, they're faithful, coming to church regular, and all of a sudden, you don't see them no more. Then when I do, when I do see them, say, why you hadn't been coming to church? I miss you at the church. Well, I'm going through some things. And, and I've been under attack a lot. And I'll come back when I'm doing better. No, no, you need to come when you're doing bad. Man, that's the time to come. You need to come when everything's falling apart. And the enemy puts that in their mindset. No, oh, you, I'll come back when I'm doing better. I'll come back when things are more together. No, when you're under attack, when everything's starting to fall apart, man, that's when you should be waiting on the doorstep for the door to open. You should be waiting in the parking lot. Well, possibly here yet? Nobody here with the key yet? You, you, should be, you should be here before anybody. No, draw closer to God. Draw closer to God. What he's saying is right. He said, you draw nigh unto God and he'll do what? He'll draw near unto you. So to pass your test, to survive the shaking, when the attack comes, you run closer to God. You depend more on his word than, than ever before. And, and, and because the purpose of the shaking is for the testing. He said, the silver is mine. He said, and the gold is also mine, saith the Lord of hosts. Saith the Lord of hosts. You know what that term Lord of hosts means? He's the Lord of the fighting forces. Other words, he's the Lord that will fight for you. He's the Lord that will go before you. He's the Lord that will do battle for you in the night hours. He will, he is the Lord that will war against your enemies and cause your enemies to pass over you and bring you into that great inherited place. He'll fight for you. I say, God will fight for you. But you can't run from him. You got to run to him when you get in trouble. Oh, hallelujah. You got to run to him when you get a bad diagnosis from a doctor. You got to run to him when you lose the job. You got to run to him when you get the foreclosure and they, and they repossess your car. You got to run to him. Hallelujah. So how can I come to church and I lose my car? Call somebody up. They'll pick you up. Hallelujah. If you're serious enough, you get there. You get anywhere else you want to go. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You get your car repossessed, but you ain't going to work because your car got repossessed. No, you're going to find a way to get to that job. Hallelujah. If you got to call an Uber or a Lyft for somebody, you're going to get there. A Amen. No. 
whenever the attack comes you got it we got to run closer to God because this tells what kind of house we have built when you stick with God through the through the miry clay and through all of the opposition and when and when the battle is over you're still standing it's a sign that you've been building on the rock hallelujah and the rains come and the floods beat and blow upon your house and it will not fall if you find it upon the rock Christ Jesus. Can you say amen? He said, the silver is mine, the gold is mine, said the Lord of hosts. And he lets us know that the glory, nine, verse 9, of this latter house, and we are that latter house. You've been called to be a part of that latter house. What's, your, what's, what's latter house? Latter house is this last day church. He said, the glory of this latter house will be greater than that of the former, saith the Lord of hosts. And then he said, in this place, I'll give peace. In this place. I said, this place. I, that's why he got you in this place. That's why he brought you here to this place. Come on, say, this place is where my peace is. That's why he wouldn't let you go to no other, no other church when you were driving around. That's why he brought you to this place, because he wants you to know this is where peace is. This is where restoration is. This is where joy is. This is where strength is. Come on, say, this is my place. In Jesus' name. Because he says, in this place will I give peace. In this place will I... Don't you know the peace of God is a weapon of your warfare? Oh, hallelujah. That's why the enemy's always got your peace under attack. He wants to get you all frustrated and, and bum-fuzzled and balled up and, 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 and everything and worried. He's after your peace. He's after your peace. Because he says in Romans 16, 20, the God of all peace will soon crush Satan. I'm talking about mash him to smithereens. I, I, hallelujah. I'm talking about, you ever, you ever take, think of, think of taking the egg and putting it on your feet. You think you have problems crushing the egg? Uh, hallelujah. How I many of you see when that boy hit that man with the egg this week? Oh, Lord. I mean, you know, it was really funny. I just had to laugh. <laughs> that young boy took out. But he didn't have no problem crushing that egg. <laughs> Only crushing up against that man's head. Hey, it'll, the devil will be just like an egg under your feet. Can you imagine having a, a raw egg under your feet? I don't think you'll have much trouble crushing that thing. That's how the God of peace is about to crush Satan under your feet. Oh, Rebo Shekhar say. Somebody just need to pick up your foot and stomp it. That's because of what he's been trying to do to you. That's because you know the God of peace. Because the God of peace is also the God of war. And he will crush Satan under your feet. He said, that's why in this place, I will give peace. In this place, I will give peace. So God's saying, I've allowed the shaking. I've allowed the testing to prove who I can trust with my silver and gold. I've allowed the testing. Because see, God, like I was telling the people last Sunday, if God is going to bless himself he's got to bless you and I if God needed a hundred thousand dollars to advance his kingdom in the earth he's got to put it in our hands if God is going to advance the kingdom he's going to do it through us so this is what the Holy Spirit told me on Saturday night when I was preparing for last Sunday. He said, tomorrow you'll tell the people, stop saying, bless me, God, and start saying, God, bless yourself. I ought to both say, well, why not say that? He said, tell them to stop saying, Lord, please bless me, and just say, Lord, just bless yourself. Because if he blesses himself, he's going to have to do it through you, Jude. If he blesses himself, he's going to do it through you, Mary. If he needs a, a million dollars to advance the kingdom, he's got to give it to you, Retta. Uh -huh. If he's going to bless himself, he's got to do it through us. But he's going to have to trust us first. Uh -huh. He's going to have to put his gold and silver in the hands of people he can trust. So, so that's why we thank God for the tests. We thank God for the trials. We thank God for the difficulties. Because we're, we're determined, God, I'm not going to run away from you. I'm going to run closer to you. Because I've got to pass this test. I've got to pass this test. Hallelujah. And when the enemy provokes me, 
when the enemy comes against me, when the enemy attacks me from any side, what's going to spill out of me is going to be your word. What's going to spill out of me is going to be your praise. What's going to spill out of me is going to be my, your Lord. I thank you. Because when you get shaken, what's inside you is what's going to come out. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Lift your hands and tell him thank you here today. You be glorified. Okay, now, Matthew chapter 7. Go, uh, Got to go back to Matthew chapter 7 because this is very pivotal in what the Spirit of God gave me to show, to share with you today in the area of how to build this strong house. Jesus said some things here in Matthew chapter 7 and verse 24. He said, therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them. So now that tells me in order to build a strong house, I've got to hear what Jesus said. I've got to also believe what he said. And I've got to do what he said. Where we, where we miss it at is we hear a lot of times, sometimes we even believe. But the problem comes with the doing. The problem comes with the doing. You see, because a lot of times the will of God is usually something your flesh don't want to do. Your flesh will resist it. I, I, said, I said, Lord, I, I've got to learn how I know certain things are the will of God. When my flesh resisted, <laughs> when my flesh said, God, I don't feel like that. God, I don't want to do that. God, that's so uncomfortable for me. I just feel awkward doing that. And, and, and that's how I know it's the will of God. So he said, he that hear these sayings of mine and doeth them. James said, be hearers of the word and not be doers of the word and not just hearers only. James 1.22. He said, I will liken him unto a wise man that built his house upon a rock. The rain descended, the floods came, the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell not. Why? It was founded upon a rock. The rain, the wind, and all of the adversity is a part of the shaking. He said, but if you're building on the rock, it doesn't matter how much shaking comes. When the storm is over, you and your house will still be standing. Glory to God. He said, because it was founded upon a rock. And we know Jesus Christ is the rock of our salvation. Hallelujah. I always like to say it like this. He's the rock that'll never roll. Oh, hallelujah. This world talk about rock and roll. No, Jesus is my rock and he'll never roll. In other words, he's always be solid. He's always be stable. And all we got to do is build on him. He says, he built his house upon a rock, rains descend, floods came, wind blew upon the house, and it fell not because it was founded upon a rock. Now, the opposite, verse 26. And everyone that hear these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be like unto a foolish man for his bill is house on the sand and you know what you know you got a lot of folks that are building their houses on the sand they're not building on the rock Christ Jesus they're building on some other foundation and the Bible says no other foundation can any man lay than that which is already laid which is Jesus Christ he's the only foundation to which will sustain us in these times and so I'm a foundation layer I'm a builder. Apostles are foundation layers and builders. The problem with the body of Christ is that they have not connected themselves with God, God's foundation layers. Hallelujah. Because we believe, and I believe, and I say it all the time, we build the church by building people. We build the church by building God's people. So if you are a part of the family of God, you're, you're, a part, you're one of the children of the Lord, your life needs to be built properly. And you need the right foundation. The most important part of any building is the foundation. If the foundation is weak or the foundation is, 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 is soft or, or, or not strong, pretty soon that building is going to start to cut to sway and rock and, and crack. And, 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 and if, if it's a house and the foundation starts to go, the first, one of the first things you can tell where the foundation is being, uh, being compromised is that your doors are not going to close. Hallelujah. You got any door that's hard to open or won't close? It's because the foundation is sinking and the whole door, ar door arch is shifting. No, things are going to start to show up if that foundation is not right. 
weaknesses are going to start to show up. Things are going to be out of place. Things are not going to work properly. Things just would not work as they should if your foundation is out, is, is out of order. So that tells me the church must get back to the foundational giftings of the apostles and prophets. Hallelujah. Apostles and prophets build the house of God, build the people of God the way God wants it to be built. We build you on the rock. We point you to Jesus Christ. Like I said, I think in our Bible study on, on, on last Thursday, one of the, one of the signs of, of, of a true apostle is that that, per, that apostle has a revelation of Jesus. Because it's all about Jesus, folks. It's all about the foundational gifting of Jesus. And we got multitudes of people on planet Earth. And some of you probably watching this this morning, either by YouTube or live stream. You're, 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 in the, you're in the Islam. You're in the Buddhism. You're in the all kind of other religions. If you're building on anything other than Jesus Christ, your house is going to crumble. And you need to move from Buddha. You need to move from Islam. You need to move from, from, from whatever other leader other than Jesus Christ and give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ because he is the rock that will cause us to build strong. And you can say amen to that. That's the truth that for, for the next million years that'll be the truth. Hallelujah. So uh, as, we, as we taught on Thursday night, we've got to get a revelation of truth. We've got to get a revelation of truth and it starts with Jesus Christ because he is the one that will cause us to be strong still standing when the storm has passed over can you say amen to that glory to god he says the opposite the opposite verse 26 everyone that hear these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man that builds his house on the sand oh hallelujah you know a lot of people like they like beach homes they like beach houses but you know i i i wouldn't build a house on the beach no, 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 no. I don't think I'd even buy a house on the beach because you're just setting that thing up to be destroyed. No, when that storm comes, the first thing that they'll tell you, get off the beach. No, why? Because they know the foundation is not firm. The sand is not firm. And a lot of people are building their lives on sand. They're building their lives on sand. Their lives have been built on sand. God is, God is saying today, it's time to change the foundation. How we start changing the foundation first you got to give your life to the lord jesus christ number two you've got to be filled with the holy spirit and number three i said i you put this at number three you got to you got to get around some people who know how to build you got to get around some leaders who know how to build and, and, and the lord deliver god's deliver your people from leaders who don't know how to build and that's the reason a lot of us when the adversity comes when the storm comes when the shaking comes, our foundation has much to be desired. Why? Because of the building process that already went on in us. But see, God's doing a new thing. I say God's doing a new thing. God's bringing his people out from under leaders who, who, who are not building properly and, 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 and directing them uh, to apostles and prophets. Hallelujah. Uh, Ephesians 2 19 says the church is built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone and, and you see it's the apostolic and the prophetic that's going to show you how to build because automatically we don't know how to build ourselves we do what we think we do what we like we do what seems right but Proverbs 16 25 said there's a way that seems right to a man or a woman but the end thereof are the ways of death no, we've got to be positioned properly so that we can be properly built in this season. I'm saying this, folks. I'm saying this for those who have not built initially properly, but I'm also saying for those that have been built properly that you must stay on the right foundation. Glory to God. Because the enemy will try to move you off of the right foundation. I always like to say there's a warfare to get here, and there's a warfare to stay hallelujah how many of you know it's a warfare it was a warfare to get here and how many of you sure enough know it's been a warfare to stay the enemy told you two years ago you need you supposed to leave no no but because you you're after god and you're on the right foundation you're still standing and god's going to be glorified okay so he says he that heareth these sayings of mine and we know what comes by hearing faith comes by hearing so when you hear the truth of god and you believe the truth of God, it builds faith in your heart, and that faith is what will please God and bring you that victory. You must also be, uh, you must hear and believe. You must hear and believe. 
You must hear and believe, not just in your head, but believe in your heart. You must hear and believe. You must hear and believe. You must hear and believe. You say, why are you saying that so much until it gets through to somebody that you must not just hear, but you also must believe that what you're hearing is the truth. Hallelujah. And we know who the truth is, right? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. So you got to believe what you hear of the Word of God. John chapter 5 verse 24 says, He that heareth my words and believe on him that sent me has everlasting life, shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. Come on, say hear and believe. You got to hear and believe. Now I had the third, third thing to hear and believe, you got to also do. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because hearing, believing, hearing, being a believer, being a doer of the Word of God, but you also got to be a lover of the Word of God. Now I'm going to take this thing into the Word of God today because the Holy Spirit really, he said, he said, let the people know they're not spending enough time in my Word. Let them, let them know that they're going through the week and they're not putting the time into the Word that they need to. Because I want you to know the Word is the foundation. The Word is the main uh, 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 substance in the foundation. Because it's the Word of God that brings strength. Hallelujah. It's the Word of God that brings His presence. It's the Word of God that brings power. It's the Word of God that brings us everything that we need. And even the Holy Spirit came out of the Word of God and God's gonna be glorified okay now let's take this thing in this matter if we're gonna build we gotta build with more of the Word say this with me and then, then you can this is very safe you can say this say in the name of Jesus this week I will put more time in reading studying and meditating and doing the Word of God. That's this week, Lord. I make a declaration and a promise. Help me to fight off the distraction in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. That's one area along with prayer. The enemy is always going to attack you. He's always going to try to divert you away from time with the Word of God. Because he knows if you get this word down in your spirit, if you get this word in your foundation, that, 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 that whenever the attack comes, you don't need a Bible, you don't need a tablet, you don't need to read nothing. That word's going to come up out of your spirit. And that word's going to be the hammer, it's going to be the sword, it's going to be the fire that you need to bring you past that situation. You got to get the word inside you. You got to get the word inside you. You got to get the word inside you. Hallelujah. That means you got to spend time in the Word of God. You got to read more. Come on, say, I got to read more. Hallelujah. Once you done read, you got to meditate. And you know, this is what I do. Before I even read, I said, I pray. I said, Lord, help me to gain the truth, the revelation, the knowledge, and understanding that you want me to have out of what I'm about to read. You need to pray before you read. Hallelujah. And God will, God will stretch that thing. God will expand that word of God. And, 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 and wisdom and knowledge will come. But he said, we have not because we what? We ask not. So God is saying, tell the people, we, are, we, we must take time, make time in the word of God this week. Glory to God. And that includes coming to Bible study. Glory to God. I had to give a commercial for Bible study right there. Just couldn't resist that, Justin. Just had to plug that. Glory to God. Because you see, what the, what the devil hates, he hates people that carry the word in their heart. And he'll try to rob you of that. Hallelujah. You, 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 you probably got 10 Bibles in your house. How much word you got in your heart? That's the question. Hallelujah. And, and, and most of them Bibles in your house, dusty. <laughs> Hallelujah. They got dust on them and and some of them, well, I know I had me an NIV. I know I had me, I know I had a, a living Bible. But where? You hadn't been using it. I said, you hadn't been using it. God said, tell the people you need to put more of the word in. You need to put more of the word. You need to eat this word. You need to devour this word. You need to develop a love for the word of God. And the more that we put the word in, the more we're going to love the word. 
and, and, and God's going to be glorified and the house will be strong. Can you say amen? Uh, uh, intake more of the word because the word of God is the truth of God. And we know the truth will set us free. Can you say amen? The word of God also, I said, and I'm, I'm, I'm using this for my teaching on Thursday night. Uh, truth will, will also set you free, but truth will also give you a defense and stability. Truth will bring us a, a defense and stability. Hallelujah. In these times that we're in, folks, we need God's defense. Boy, I'm telling you, it's dangerous out there. Hallelujah. And in some places, it, it done got dangerous in the church. It's dangerous out there. I mean, evil is everywhere. But, but, but if you got this truth in you, you got this word inside you, this word will cause the angels of the Lord to camp round about you and protect you. Hallelujah. Because it brings us defense and it brings stability. He says in, in Psalms 91 verse 4, thy tr My truth shall be thy shield and thy buckler. My truth shall be your shield and your buckler. Now, if you want to know about the shield and the buckler, you got to get the tape, get the recording from 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 uh, Thursday night because we broke down the shield and we broke down the buckler. How many of you now who was here Thursday night? You know what the buckler is. Amen. You got to know what that buckler is. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm not going to tell you. Hallelujah. Get the recording. Glory to God. Why? It's stability. I just told you. It's stability. It makes you stable. It's stability. It'll protect you. It's a shield, but it's the truth of the Word of God. The Word of God also, oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit follows the Word. The Holy Spirit follows the Word. You got to know that. You see, because the Holy Spirit is the power that we need to be strong. The Holy Spirit is the power that causes us to survive. The Holy Spirit follows the Word. Go with me to Psalms 147. Hallelujah. And I thank God for the Holy Ghost that gives me these scriptures that we don't usually look at. But I want you to know the Word of God is ever revealing itself. Psalms 147. Come on, somebody tell the Lord thank you. Folks, our house got to be strong. Our house got to be strong because there's a storm coming. There's a storm on the way. And only the strong is going to survive the storm. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Psalms 147. Psalms 147, and let's look at verse number 18. Verse 18, he says, He sendeth out his word and melteth them. He causes his wind to blow and the waters to flow. But what goes forth first? He sends the word first. The word melts them. You say, what? The word melts? Yeah, did you know the word is fire? Don't fire melt ice. Hallelujah. You say, well, well, how does that pertain to me? I'm not ice. <laughs> Thank God you're not ice. No, but the melting of the person is the bringing down the haughtiness and the pride that might be in us and bringing us under conviction of the Holy Ghost. Whenever a person becomes convicted by the Word of God through the Holy Ghost, God just melted something inside you. God just melted something of the enemy that was once time standing up. The Word of God will melt that pride. He'll melt that arrogance. He'll let you know that you ain't all that. Hallelujah. And sometimes He's got to slam you against the wall to melt you, to make you know that He's God and you're not. No, the melting is, is the convicting of the Holy Spirit. But I want you to know the convicting comes through the truth of God. Verse 18, he says, He sendeth out his word, and he convicts them, or he melts them. Then once the word has gone forth, he causes the wind to blow and the water to flow. So we know the wind is also a symbol of who? The Holy Spirit. There came a sound as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole place where they were sitting. And he says, he causes the water to flow. So what am I saying? Whenever you fill yourself with the word of God in your life, the Holy Ghost will follow you around. The Holy Ghost will follow that word that's inside you. Hallelujah. Come on, say, put the word in. Come on, you prophesied to yourself now. Put the word in. Put the word in. Now turn to somebody and prophesy to them. Say, put the word in. 
Yeah, you got to put the word in because the word, the word of God, when the word of God is released from the mouth of God, the Holy Ghost will be right there. And I want you to know you're not going to make it by might nor power. You're going to make it by the spirit of the Lord because everything is accomplished by the Holy Ghost. So, so I, I see in verse 18 of Psalms 147, first he sends out his word, then he melts the, the stony heart, then he causes the wind to blow and the water to flow. I said the wind's getting ready to blow and the water's about to flow. But it starts with the word. I said it starts with the word. I said it starts with the word. You want more of the Holy Ghost in your life? Put more word in. You want the anointing to increase? Put more word in. The wind will blow, then the water will flow. Hallelujah. When the water will flow, it's something about that Holy Ghost and that water and that fire, that water will start to boil. As fire causes water to boil, Isaiah 64 says. And, and, and it ignites us, it ignites us for God's purpose. While we're still in Psalms, in Psalms 147, go to 148 and look at verse 8. Come on, somebody tell the Lord thank you. We're talking about, we're putting an emphasis on this word. We're, we're talking about the logos, which is the written word that we've got to get in our spirit even the more. Because this is all a part of that preparation for what's ahead. I'll, be, I'll read verse 7. He says, Praise the Lord from, from the earth, ye dragons and all the deep. Then verse 8 says, Fire and hail and snow and vapor. Stormy wind fulfilling his word. I believe this is another analogy or another symbolic, symbolic language of the Holy Spirit carrying out the word of God. Because we know he is fire. Ah, y'all must say. He, he, he is fire. Hail is a type of one of the weapons of God. Hallelujah. And hail is frozen water or ice, which is Holy Ghost is in the ice or the hail, because water makes up the hail. And he says vapor. You say, well, what's vapor? Vapor is smoke. When you put water and fire together, you get something we call steam. Come on, say steam. Hallelujah. Steam is that vapor, which is a type of the glory of the Lord. When the water hits the fire, it makes steam. He says, and, uh, he says vapor, and then he says stormy wind. Boy, that, oh, I read that last night. The Holy Ghost said, what about rushing mighty wind? What about a rushing mighty wind? He said, because it's the Holy Spirit that will carry out and fulfill the word of God in your life. So, but it starts first with putting the word in. I says it starts first with putting the word in. It starts first with putting the word in. And, and Numbers, I read this passage last night. It talks about when they were gathering manna. I, I, I'll give you the quote some other time. But I just, I just saw a portion of the verse. It talks about when they were gathering manna. And the, and the people were complaining, this is all we got to eat is manna, Moses. You've given us this manna for every meal. And, and the Bible says they would gather the manna and, and, they, and they would crush it. They would beat it. They would pound it. He said, and when they eat it, he said that the taste of it was like fresh oil. Other words, the manna tastes like fresh oil when they ingested it. What am I telling you? I'm telling you the more of this word you put in you, the more of the anointing and the power of the Holy Ghost and the fresh oil will be upon your life. Hallelujah. Come on, say, eat more of the word. Eat more of the word. I ah, utter the most say. Hallelujah. Because God says that his word will not return unto him void, but it will accomplish that which he sent us forth to do. All we got to do, folks, we got to start speaking more of the word. Oh, hallelujah. You say, I heard that before. Well, you're going to hear it 10 more times. All you got to do is start speaking and declaring more of the word of God. Okay, how many of you are dealing with a situation that you didn't order? You feel like it's a part of your shaking and, and, and you feel like you've been under. Come on, let me see your hand. Okay, now I'm going to give you an assignment. You go into the word of God and find in the word of God where it promises you what you desire in that situation. Hallelujah. Now see, uh, you say, why, why don't you give it to her? I don't know what you're dealing with. And why, why don't you tell her? I don't know what you're dealing with. Hallelujah. 
See, because if you're dealing, if you're dealing with affliction in your body, you need some healing word. If you need a provision, you need some Jehovah Jireh word. So you go and, 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 and extract from the word of God what you need that's going to bring you through where you are. Hold to that. Speak it. Declare it. Speak it to the enemy. Speak it over that situation. Declare the decree. Declare it already done. And watch the power of the wind. Watch the power of the, of the Holy Ghost. Watch the power of the hail. Watch the power of the vapor. Watch the power of the fire. Bring that thing to pass for you. Turn to your neighbor and say, put the word on it. You just put the word on it. Put the word on it. Put the word on it. You put the word of God on it. Why? Because Jesus won the battle of the enemy in the wilderness with the word of God. When the devil said, make these stones bread, Jesus said, man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. In other words, Jesus put the word on the enemy. Let me tell you something. Jesus didn't have to go and say, well, well, where, where, where is the, where is the Torah? I, I, I need, I need the Torah. I got, oh, the devil's coming. No, he didn't go looking for a Bible. He had the word inside him. Folks, there are going to be some situations you, you're not going to have time to get a book. You're not going to have time to pull it up on a tablet. You better get that word in your heart. You speak the word of God. The Bible says it will not come back void. Do you believe what I'm telling you here today? Hallelujah. Well, turn to your neighbor and say, let's do it. Let's speak the word. Amen. Okay. Okay. Now, now this is where we're going to see some more miracles. We're going to see some more breakthroughs. Because some, a lot of times, the, the shaking comes. Uh-oh. God, 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 God took me back to the shaking. He said the shaking comes because a lot of times we make idols out of things. Oh. I said to decide. Come back to y'all. He says he allows the shaking whenever you make an idol out of something. Mm. Marriage being shaken. Maybe you've idolized the person. Ah. Finances being shaken. Maybe you've idolized the business, the job, the financial income. God allows shaking when we create idols. The shaking is to deliver us from the idols that we've set up because God cannot use idols so if you got idols God's going to shake those things oh hallelujah the idol could be the job you feel like you're about to lose the job or maybe you've already lost the job God says because you put more time in the job then you put in my purpose so I will snatch the job because I will have no other God before me mm. see sometimes we can bring shaking on ourselves husband acting up children acting up grandchildren acting up maybe you've idolized them maybe you've put them in God's place and God says I have to shake you shake you loose from these things for my purpose to be done oh hallelujah real quiet in this sometimes wild sometimes loud sometimes running around the room church oh. say to yourself check if you got any idols ah yeah mm -hmm. but you see the shaking is to separate us from these things because, folks, it's got to be God and God alone. Hallelujah. It's the word of God that will reveal these things to us so that God's will can be done and his kingdom come. The word of God will also activate the angels of the Lord to fight on your behalf. We've got to know that God has dispatched an angelic host to carry out his bidding in the earth and we got to be aware of the fact that angels are here i'm telling you they're here you say what do you mean here they're in this room right now whether you realize it or not those angels are here
they're here right now because they're on an assignment for the kingdom of God. They, they, they love the worship of God. They're drawn where people will worship and praise God. They're drawn where the word of God is released because they are the ones that carry out the assignment of the kingdom. I'm headed to Psalms 103. Psalms 103. I'm almost there. Almost done today. Hallelujah. God's saying the house is going to be strong. Harvest Center, if you hang around Harvest Center, you're going to be strong. Hallelujah. You're going to be built properly. Hallelujah. And you'll not only be a conqueror, you will be more than a conqueror. How many of you want to be more than a conqueror? Then the Bible promises you are more than conquerors through him that love you. It's one thing to be a conqueror, but I want to be more than a conqueror. He said, well, what's more than a conqueror? A conqueror means that I've been set free. But more than a conqueror means I can go set somebody free. I can go set other people free. God's raising us up for that assignment. Can you say amen to that? The word of the Lord in our mouths are powerful, folks. Hallelujah. And I'm going to tell you this. You don't have to just take what the devil brings in your life. You don't have to just settle for what the enemy drops on your doorstep. You got to say, in the name of Jesus, that don't belong here. Get away from my house. In Jesus' name. You're not going to have my children. You're not going to have my finance. You're not going to have my health. Why? Because he's given us authority. You, we've got to start using this authority, folks. Glory to God. Folks will say you're crazy when you start using your authority. Hallelujah. You say, what do you mean they say you're crazy? Because you're going to start talking to things. <laughs> you're going to start talking to things. You're going to start talking to situations. You're going to start talking to the circumstances. Say, in the name of Jesus, you will not continue. Hallelujah. Sickness and disease, get out of my child. In Jesus' name. Glory to God. What did I tell you to turn to? My God. Psalms 100, 103, right? Verse 20. 103, 20. Bless the Lord, ye his angels, that excel in strength, that do his commandments, hearkening unto the voice of his word. Hearkening to the voice of his word. To hearken means to listen. So it tells me here that the angels are listening for the word of God to come out of our mouths. Because I believe that the word of the Lord out of our mouths, when the word comes out of our mouths in the spirit realm, it forms a sword. Hallelujah. And the angel is waiting for that sword to come out of your mouth. Then the Bible said in Hebrews 4.12, the word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, to the dividing of the jun uh, uh, asunder, the joints and the marrow, the bones and the marrow, and is the discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. In other words, God is waiting for you to release that sword out of your mouth. You start releasing the sword out of your mouth, that situation is going to change. Because the angels are standing by you right now, just waiting for that sword to come out. Hallelujah. And, and, and when you speak that word one time, hallelujah, you got a little sword. When you speak it twice, the sword gets a little bigger. When you speak it again, the sword grows a little bigger. When you speak it a fifth time, that sword grows, it, it's, it's done got bigger. Hallelujah. The blade that got wider, you keep speaking it, the sword gets bigger. I said the sword gets bigger. The more you speak it, the bigger the sword gets. Speak more of the word. Give that angel a giant sword. Give that angel a sword that's going to go and destroy and devour the enemy that's becoming against you. Come on, say, speak the word. Oh, hallelujah. Because the angels are waiting. I said the angels are waiting. The angels are waiting for the sword to fight for you, my friend, my believer, my, my disciple, my brother, my sister. God is waiting for that sword to come out of your mouth. Glory to God. You need a healing? Release a healing sword. He sent his word to heal me and to deliver me from destruction. Don't just say that one day. Don't just say that one time a day. You say that all day long. Until the healing manifests. Until the sword becomes the size that the angel can go and destroy that spirit of infirmity. He said the angels, they hearken. Are they listening for the voice of his word? They're listening for the rhema. They're listening for the logos. Logos, written word, rhema, spoken word. 
and, and, and rhema, my folks, my, my friends, is, is that spoken decree, is that declared decree that God wants you to say concerning your situation. You see, because when you come to, to speak in the rhema, you're not asking God for anything. You got to know that prayer is more than just asking God for something. Prayer is also declaring what God has already promised you. But you got to know what he's promised you because you got to know the word of God. If you know he's already promised you to be prosperous, all you got to do is declare that God shall supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory through Christ Jesus. I'm wealthy. I'm in a wealthy place financially. You got to declare that because God already said it. That's spoken word. That's declaring the decree. See, this is, this is what's called prophetic intercession. You know how to, how to intercede prophetically? When you're doing prophetic intercession, you don't beg God. You don't ask God. You declare what God has already promised you. I'm teaching somebody how to pray. No, you start declaring what God's already promised you. But how are you going to know what he promised you if you don't get into this book? How, may, how are you going to know what he's promised you if you don't put that word on the inside of you? Hallelujah. Folks, I'm here to tell you this word works. You say, how do you know it works? I put it to work and it has worked for me and it's still working for me. And if it worked for me, it'll work for you. God is no respecter of persons. All you got to do is be after God. Are you after God today? Oh, hallelujah. Got to chase after him. Okay, almost done. Let me show you what he showed me about these angels here. Verse 20. Bless the Lord, ye his angels that excel in strength, that do his commandments, hearkening to the voice of his word. So what the Holy Spirit showed me, he said, the more we speak the word of God, the more we strengthen those angels. They excel in strength. In other words, they get stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger till they can overflow and overthrow any adversary that might be coming against you. Hallelujah. Daniel proved it with his 21-day fast. As Daniel continued to fast and pray, Daniel strengthened those angels until Gabriel was able to break through and bring Daniel his answer. This is why prayer and intercession is so important, folks. I mean, you've got to become a prayer warrior in this season. You've got to learn how to pray. You've got to know how to pray. You've got to be able to pray in tongues like never before. Because even in tongues, the angel will take that word. Oh, hallelujah. Because when we pray in tongues, we're speaking the word of God. We're declaring the will of God. And the angels will work with the will and the word of God. Hallelujah. That's why when we pray in tongues, boy, those angels, just, they're all over the place. Because they'll take that word and fight for us. Can you say amen? And folks, let me tell you something. Our praying in tongues is producing stuff that you don't even know. I'm telling you, some of what this stuff is producing... I know some things I can't even say now, but it's already been produced. God said there's a time for the release, and it's not yet. Turn to your neighbor and say, keep praying in tongues. Just keep praying in tongues. Just keep praying in tongues. Just keep praying in tongues. You don't know what you're accomplishing. God's about to get the glory. Hallelujah. But the angels are empowered with the words of our mouth. They're able to hearken unto the voice of his word. They excel in strength, and they're able to do his commandments. But I want you to know, folks, in order to build that strong house, we're going to have to spend more time in the word of God. We're going to have to do, spend more time reading, studying, meditating, and speaking the word of God like never before because I want you to know the word of God is fire in our mouths. The word of God is like fire in our mouths against the enemy. And he's given us a weapon that will cause us to be strong in the midst of adversity. When the storm comes, when the attack comes, and when it's all over, you still be standing. And you still have your integrity. You still hadn't cussed nobody out. Hallelujah. That's right. Because like I told you, when you're shaken, what's inside you is what's going to spill out. And God's going to be glorified. Jesus said, he that hears these sayings of mine and do them, I will liken him unto a wise man that built his house upon the rock. Wind, wind blew, rains come, beat upon the house. It fell not because it's founded upon a rock. I'm trying to put some more rock under you today. I'm trying to put, put some more stability under you today. 
for the days that are ahead and maybe for somebody even for next week. And you'll be well prepared to handle whatever the enemy will bring your way because your house will be founded upon a rock. Can you say amen to that? Stand to your feet and give God praise. Stand to your feet and give God thanks. Stand to your feet because he's showing you how to build a house strong that it will not fail. And you too will be more than a conqueror. More than a conqueror. Hallelujah. Especially those of you that have been under serious attack. Many of you been, you feel like you've been under some serious attack. The more serious the attack, the greater the anointing that's about to be released on your life. So in order to combat that attack, put the word of God in your spirit. Because like I just told you, the word draws the Holy Spirit. He'll confirm that word with miracle signs and wonders in your life. God's about to show you a miracle. I'm here to tell you, God's about to show you a miracle. I'm talking to you. God's about to show you a miracle. Ah, ah, yakawura masse. God's about to show you a miracle. Do you believe that? Oh, do you really believe that? Some of you didn't say it like you believe it. Some of you didn't say it like you believe it. But do you really believe that? If you believe that, turn to that person next to you and shout, yes! Oh, that's what I'm talking about. That's right. Yes, I believe it. And it's done in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You just, what you doing right now? You getting your shout and your dance ready. Oh, what I about to say? You just getting the shout and the dance ready. But when the thing break out, when the thing break through, when the manifestation come, you will have your shout and dance already in place. Oh, hallelujah. He say you get your shout and your dance ready. <laughs> oh, glory to God. <laughs> because he sent his word to heal you and to deliver you from that situation. I said he sent his word to heal you and to deliver you from that situation. Hallelujah. God's going to be glorified. <laughs> Just stay on the rock. Just stay on the rock. Just stay built, founded, established on the rock. Don't let the circumstance move you. But you only be moved by the word of God that's inside you. Hallelujah. You got to be at a place where the devil can't move you. Sure, he might shake some things around you, but you can be unshakable. Hallelujah. You can tell these folks they're shakable. Whenever the battle gets, when the battle gets tough, they get to run it. No, no. A sign of a true believer, a sign of a real soldier, that even when the fire gets hot, you can stay right in the fire. You can stay right in the fire. When the fire gets hot, you don't run out of the out of the furnace because you know the fourth man. You know the fourth man. You know the fourth man is right there. And he'll turn the enemy's fire into the fire of God for you. And you'll come out stronger. You'll come out more radical. You'll come out more excited. You'll come out more determined than you've ever been before. And then when it's all over, you look back and say, Lord, I thank you for the shaking. I thank you for the shaking. Because you're going to be able to thank him one day for what you're going through right now. Because what you're going through right now is about to make you the man that God wants you to be. What you're going through right now is about to make you the woman that God wants you to be. God's about to turn you into a flaming arrow. A flaming arrow. For his glory because you've been through the fire you've been through the tests and you came out victorious oh hallelujah lift your hands and give God another praise here today unto you God we give thanks unto you God we give praise unto you God we give a shout of victory hallelujah 
to you, God. Hallelujah. Ah, all the praise, all the glory, all the honor to you, God. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Oh, my God, my God, my God. Ah, thank God for the Holy Ghost. Thank God for the fire of his presence. Thank you, Lord. Okay, Lord, I hear you. He said, if you've been thinking about giving up, you've been thinking about throwing in the towel, you've been thinking about quitting, you've been thinking about turning back, the enemy's been putting his thoughts in your mind, and what's the use in battling this, what's the use in, and, and you, you just can't seem to come out. God said today, he's going to put strength, he's going to put steel in you today. He's going to put strength in you today. If the battle has gotten to the point that you feel like you need some extra help from the Lord, there's an anointing here to give you that extra help. This could be just the catalyst, just that which will launch you past that area where the enemy has told you that you're not going to make it. You need that extra help from the Lord today. I'm here to tell you there's an anointing. Ramandrio Shatanabase that will help you press past and give victory over that area. Come right now in the name of Jesus. Somebody's dealing with a family member.